A couple of years ago, Wellesley College history professor Lydwin Captains contacted me to say she had a story for Afropop. It had to do with little-known musical history in Somalia. Professor Captains told me she had a rare collection of popular songs, many sung by women, and that these songs had once charted a course for a peaceful, unified future in Somalia. The songs, mostly from the 60s and 70s, came to Professor Captains through a collector named Mariam Omar Ali. They arrived at Wellesley in a big metal trunk filled with rare cassettes. Mariam and the professor spent years translating, interpreting, and digitizing these songs, and they told quite a story. I was hooked. So on a snowy day in February 2014, I visited Professor Captains at her office to interview her for the resulting Afropop program, Reconstructing Somalia, Love Songs at the Birth of a Nation. Hey, I'm Hedwig Kaplanks and I teach history, African history and Middle Eastern history at Wellesley College. And I am here in my office together with uh, Benning Air of Afropop. And he wanted me to uh, show you a little bit uh, some of the books we're working with. I don't all have them here, but I can show you a little bit. We talked about uh, John Johnson's Heloi Heloloi, uh, which uh, is about the modern poetry and songs of the Somali, very much about the pop songs, the popular songs, in particular the political ones and their history. There are some great experts in Djibouti, by the way, uh, associated with radio and television Djibouti, where they have great programs about this history, but not accessible to the English uh, listener or reader. Uh, we talked about a play from this period, 67-68, uh, I think, just before the military uh, coup, um, which is by Hassan Sheikh Moumin, is the poet, translated by uh, we call him Gush Andrzejewski, who was at SOA School of Oriental African Studies then. And it's called A Leopard Among the Women, Yaben Dagod, about the guy who seduces and cheats young women. But really it is a play about the conditions of that time, both politically, socially, um, and it has uh, beautiful songs, meaning beautiful po poems, which were set to songs uh, that uh, were translated here. Um, Mohammed Dar Afrah uh, did a PhD at SOAS, and uh, he actually also wrote a lot about this play and uh, has one article that I'm sure we will provide a link uh, on the Afropop website. Um, uh, this is a book uh, which with Miriam Omar Ali, to whom I really uh, would like to dedicate this program, a woman who uh, passed away a couple of years ago, and she really dedicated her life to collecting Somali songs. And she says, God did not give me a voice, otherwise I would have been one of them. But I grew up uh, among them. Actually, this Hassan Sheikh Moumin we just talked about, took her by the hand when she was a little girl and would took her to, to the theater in Hargeisa to see, you know, some of the place. And so Miriam really spent her life uh, collecting songs, but also trans transliterated a lot of text. Um, the other thing is she always advocated for and defended the singers. Uh, explaining in what a difficult position they were in Somalia. On the one hand, beloved divas, you know, uh, creators of the national culture, and at the same time, in a Muslim society that was still fairly conservative, they are just singers, right? And what do they do? Uh, how do they create? And, 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 and so there was still something about a social stigma as well as this incredible national honor. And so, and so this is a book that first part really uh, deals with folkloric text, but the second part deals with the pop songs. And uh, we picked particular songs that deal with the gender debate. Uh, what is a good woman? What is a good guy? Mostly, what is a good woman? I think those are the most important ones for this project. Okay, let's look at this map. Yes, let's look at this map. Um, this, by the way, we happen to have a, a colonial map, it's a Somalia Italiana, but it, it will do what we need to do. This was British Somaliland, and it is now the Republic of Somaliland, self-proclaimed, seceded. Um, this is right now Puntland, which is not seceded, but is a regional state. Um, this was all Italian Somaliland, so now Puntland, 
the rest of Somalia. Jubaland is beginning, has just, I have to find Kismayo on the map here. So this also, there are different regional states forming, but all this was Italian Somaliland. Um, which was therefore much bigger. It also has the two big rivers and therefore all the agricultural, rich agricultural land, the banana plantations. So when you talk about the inter-river zone, where that... Yes, let me see what I can find the rivers here. Uh, so one ends up in uh, Kismayo. Let me see the Juba. Can you see? This is the, the Juba here, I think. Yeah. And then the Shabela ends with Mogadishu and runs by the coast here. This would be the Shabela River. So you're talking about this area. Yep. Uh, but it's particular, I must say, on the banks of those two rivers that you have the best agricultural land. And what about the parts that are in today's Kenya and Ethiopia? Yes, that would be here. NFD, and then all of this really is Somali inhabited, right? I, I try to avoid this map in my own publications because, but it is true, the international boundaries like this because Italian colonizers and the British colonizers gave that to Ethiopia. Really, truly, you know, betrayed, really. Oh, how come? I can still get excited about that. Um, there was a brief moment after World War II that the British had everything, Ethiopia, Kenya, s s the different parts of Somalia, and they were looking for a unified Somalia. But of course, they also did it for their own purposes. They wanted to dominate that area, and they were boycotted because people didn't want so much Britain in Africa. But anyway, so this is uh, Ogadenia, uh, Western Somalia, up really all the way up to here, and then this is NFD, Northern Frontier District in Kenya. Thank and so you. we're talking about Mogadishu as the center of this national culture. And of course, Mogadishu is a period where, you know, Somalia becomes kind of a one city state in this period, unfortunately. So if you wanted, you know, to get, uh, had a request from Hargeisha, you had to come to Mogadishu to the Ministry of Education. And, and so, but there was an incredible uh, migration to the city. And some of the inequalities that follow uh, are part of that kind of uh, um, history. Mm -hmm. Maybe we could talk for a second about some of these CDs when we've oh, got yes. Kanon. But this was one of the first ones in the Afropop collection, this uh, this Jamila, Songs from a Somali City. What, do you, what can you tell us about that CD? You know, it is actually also the only CD for a long time that I could find uh, that was not produced by Somali somehow. And um, it's been a while that I've listened to it, but it has um, certainly... Um, it evokes Brava. So Brava is a uh, coastal city south of Mogadishu. Well, we can put it on the map. Hmm. And it is like Mogadishu. Here is Merka, and here is Brava. So this is called the Banader. And Banader is the, is the plural of Bandar. It's a tradition, I think originally a, a Persian word, but it means the, the coast of the ports. Hmm. And this is uh, definitely part of an Indian Ocean culture. And Brava is a city in which uh, immigrants and people intermarried uh, were uh, had a city-state. It was actually uh, like Mogadishu, one of the old city-states, and like Zela, which we mentioned, which would be all the way here. Yeah? So this is a different part of the coast, it's the Gulf of Aden, and here you have the Indian Ocean. And so this uh, um, has something, uh, some of the songs uh, kind of evoke that different kind of musical style. And then some other songs are just Somali songs that uh, were the first one to happen to make it into uh, uh, onto a uh, CD. La, if I remember well, is one of the Karamis that we talked about. This is uh, this was done by John Storm Roberts' original music, and he was he was a great uh, archivist of some of the early re vinyl recordings of, of a lot of African pop music. But uh, yeah, so that's an interesting... Yeah. So and then there are these two real-world CDs, Mariam Mar Mar Marsal yeah. and this So the Wabiri one is not one I know so well, but if I can look at these are all traditional songs. I don't know the Ali Mada. There's uh, Nin Hun, so the, the bad husband, uh, is also a Miriam Marsal's one that we're going to talk about, the one that's called Journey. Um, so I think they, they are uh, representative of some of the songs that we have talked about. Um, Hafun also is a Karami. They say Hafun soft, you see? So, um, I think that is a Karami song. 
Adabere Jaelka in the Ashik. In the Ashik is uh, lovely uh, that it's here because it is one of Fadu Makasim's songs and it is in this Banadari tradition. In the Ashik, he looked at me and you know I was immediately in love. It's a, it's a really light, beautiful uh, love song um, that, that you have right there. And then we talked about Maria Musso's journey, which was done, it was done in Sweden, not Denmark, it was Sweden, with a Swedish orchestra. I think they did an amazing job keeping some of the traditional, modernizing it, you know, but not kind of freezing tradition. And then also Maria Musso wrote, you know, composed some of the songs, as far as I know, the one Kach, and then also the one Sumadi Udida Aib. The other ones, as far as I know, are older songs. Um, I'm not sure about Hamar. But uh, Somali Udida Aib and uh, and Pah, you know, it was interesting. At some point early in my project, I asked um, some friends in London, and I said, "Is there anything? Do you know any songs that deal with with the civil war?" And um, they went to a store for me, and they the store owner, Somali music store owner, made a collection for me. And what is really striking is that they had some political songs that were anti-colonial. So they, they had chosen the genre of songs that was political plus Mogadishu. <laughs> so it was really interesting. So, you know, in national songs, Mogadishu still stood in for the nation. That's good. And then we don't, and then and then we get to Canaan. That's really that's really pretty much all of the of the sort of in the world of world music. This is the representation of Somalia for the most part, right? I mean, Which it's is amazing. Interesting because you know every city in the U.S., every major city, whether it's Minneapolis, whether it is Seattle, whether it is in in Canada, Toronto, whether it is Ottawa, um, there are Somali music stores. And um, you can sit and listen, and but but of course, what makes it very inaccessible if you don't know the language, what are you listening to, no? And if you don't know any of the context, but as Somalis now, of course, um, you know that I am making a YouTube channel uh, for Miriam's collection. It is in honor of Miriam, and of course, in honor of the Somali artists uh, who have made these songs. The YouTube channel, by the way, is called. Uh, Hido songs, H I D D O songs, one word. So you can find it on YouTube that way. And um, what was I going to say about it? It actually does not include the songs that were produced outside of the U.S. Different copyright issues and all that. But it is um, amazing how many Somali songs you can find on YouTube. And I think maybe you will make a link to the one that is enough mine, which is Dean Leia. Dean Leia, which is a beautiful song. Um, so it is totally surprising what you will find. I'm finding interviews with artists who mention poets' names that I never knew. So Somali internet is Somali, you know, in a sense they skipped the, almost skipped the CD stage and went straight to the digital the cell phones. What I want to say about the YouTube channel, by the way, you can see how many people listen. And they tell you what they listen on, whether they listen on uh, you know, YouTube itself. And, and clearly, people are tuning in to YouTube uh, on different kind of devices and listening to the songs. So that's really, uh, somebody is very connected to their own culture. Yes.